Hey everybody, my name is Tito Jankowski. I'm here from San Francisco with a wonderful group of people. And I'm here to talk about how in the past two decades, we've really benefited from certain types of technology. We have technology that allows us to, to send an email, to send a message, to send something as complicated as a, a 3D file that describes how to build an engine. We can do that in an instant. And on the other end, we can communicate emotion immediately. We can take a, take a photo take a recording of your voice, take a recording of you going like this and send it around the world. You can send it to the people that you love. And so you can do with this basic technology everything from uh, discovery and blueprints all the way to emotion. But there's a gigantic gap in there, and that's the body. We have very poor tools for digitizing the body. We can send bits from one side of the country to another, all the way around the world, but we can't send bodies. We don't have a way to understand the body as, as bits, as information. Uh, and so what I'm going to be talking about is, is body hacking, and the idea that even though we don't have the technologies today, we need them, because the, the challenges of understanding the way just a simple organ works, like the heart, demand that not only do we have these technologies in, in doctor's offices or in hospitals, but we need them uh, in your home, in your garage, in your pocket, in your kitchen, in your bathroom. So my background is really in, in building tools. Uh, one of the projects I worked on was called OpenPCR, and it was taking a $10,000 PCR machine and turning it into a $500 kit that you could use at home to copy DNA. So it was something that really was only in the, in the knowledge of scientists, and now it was something that you can just do on your own. I was also a founder of BioCurious, which is a hackerspace for biotech in Silicon Valley. And it's a place where you can have a meeting of not technologies, but you have a meeting of people that are, that are working towards understanding and educating themselves about biotechnology. And those, those two worlds really collided into where I am now, which is Scanadu. And what I'm working on is building a tool so that you can, you can digitize your body in about 10 seconds. That is the missing piece, the piece where the individual can digitize themselves. We don't have it. But we do have the other pieces. We have doctors, we have hospitals, we have medical systems. And for the most part, every doctor I've met is an incredible person. They're passionate, they're devoted, they're educated. When I go to a hospital, the people I see are, they're energetic. And if it's late at night, they're tired because they love what they do and they care about the people that they work with. So that part of the system, as far as I can tell, is pretty great. What's missing is the ability for you to do that at home, for you to do that uh, by yourself, without it being a medical device, without it being something that you need specialized knowledge to understand. So I'd like to talk about digitizing the heart. The heart is really interesting. Uh, I was a musician for a long time, and I had this idea of the heart as, as a metronome. If you're familiar with a metronome, you set it up, and it just beats back and forth. Perfect timing all the time. Perfect timing that sometimes is hard to play along with because it's so perfect. The heart is not a metronome. The heart speeds up when you move a little bit. It slows back down immediately. When you breathe in, it speeds up just a little bit. And when you breathe out, it slows back down just a little bit. And that that's illustrates the challenge of digitizing the body, is that it's not a simple number like on a metronome but it's something that's continually changing, continually evolving as you evolve as a person. And the tools that we have them right, as, as they are right now, they're, they're built for hospitals. They're built for, uh, they're built for doctors. They're built for nurses. They're built for health professionals in the same way that a Boeing 747 has an interface that's designed for a pilot. The device you see on the upper right is a handheld ECG monitor. And that is looking at the electrical activity of the heart. So you attach electrodes uh, on two different parts of the body, and you're able to measure the electrical impulse as the heart beats. And if you're really interested and you have many of these sensors, uh, 
for instance, if you're, if you're wired up in a hospital, then you see all these things at once. But they're not designed for you. They're not designed for me. They're designed for doctors. Uh, and, and down there as well is a pacemaker. And what a pacemaker is, it's actually it's one of the few medical devices that you can take home because it's inside of you. If you have a problem with your heart, a pacemaker basically, if your heart is beating normally and it detects that something's off, like your heart is beating too slowly or you have an arrhythmia, the pacemaker delivers a huge jolt of energy to your heart. And that's one of the very few devices that you can, that you can take home because it's actually inside of you. These interfaces are the same. It's not just the heart. All parts of the body have this problem. Whether it's sticking something in your mouth just to take your temperature, or putting a needle in your arm just to get a blood sample, or opening your mouth up, ah, just to see your tonsils or your teeth. We don't have the interfaces for the body yet. We have a few at home. Aaron just gave a really fantastic demonstration of a urinalysis test. And that's one of the few things that you can do. And by you, I mean you can do it. You don't have any education in medicine, maybe, but you can do this at home. You, you pee in a cup and, and dip it in and watch a timer and, and see if you're healthy or not. Uh, one of the other few tools that's available is a, is a home cholesterol test. And what this involves is you take a needle and you, you stab your finger, and you hope that a bunch of blood comes out. Because if not a lot of blood comes out, you have to squeeze your finger and kind of nurse your blood out. In this picture, actually, a friend of mine tried to do the cholesterol test, but he didn't stab hard enough. So even though there's blood everywhere, it just wasn't enough blood. So that test didn't work. So these interfaces exist, but they need a lot of improvement. So what I've been working on with a lot of other people around the world is how do we improve those interfaces? Or rather, what's challenging about them? Why, haven't, why hasn't this been done already? And it hasn't been done because the human body is incredibly complex. The, even just the hand, or the heart, or the brain, every part of it is, is really hard to just, you can't plug something into it. There's no USB for your body. There's no firewire, there's no ethernet, there's no Wi-Fi. There are none of those interfaces. The interfaces we have now are uh, things like belts, so you can strap something to your wrist, or a helmet, so you can measure the EEG signals of your, of your body. And, and what we need to do is to, to, create those, to create those interfaces. This is an example um, of taking a pacemaker, an already existing pacemaker, and changing the interface of it so that uh, it, it becomes more powerful. And that's part of where these interfaces can come from. Some of these interfaces are, they exist already. The tools, the tools are with us today. Other ones we're going to have to invent, and we're going to have to change how we digitize the body. But in a lot of cases, as in the case of this pacemaker, the technology is already there. This, this pacemaker is equipped with a little wireless chip. So not only does it deliver big jolts of electricity to your heart if you have an arrhythmia or another heart problem, it can also transfer all of your heart information. It can digitize your heart over months and years. You can track your heart rate over years. You can track your heart rate variability and your arrhythmias without even thinking about it. And normally you might think of, oh, okay, a pacemaker is something that it's somebody who has a heart problem, and you're just kind of, you're making them normal again. You're, you're giving their heart, uh, you're getting their heart back to what it's supposed to be. But in this case, by opening up this interface, you can give somebody a, a view into their body that no one here has. No one here knows what their heart rate is over the past month. No one here knows what their heart rate variability is over the past month. I want a pacemaker, maybe not one that's implanted and I need surgery for, but I want one that can track my heart rate all the time and track my heart rate variability all the time. Or at the very least, that I could check it just by having something in my pocket. This example comes courtesy of a group called OpenU, and what they're working on doing is, is making libraries so that we can open up technologies that already exist. Because actually, the, you, you can't just get this information off the Medtronic uh, pacemaker. It's something that normally only your doctor can see. So in terms of existing interfaces, again, some of these technologies exist, but we just need to open them up. 
In other cases, we need to create new technologies. I had the extreme pleasure of teaching a class of 50 young students last week. They're 10 years old, and every single one of them built a heart monitor. Based on Arduino, it was a little ear clip that you pin to your ear, and then the LED flashes every time your heart beats. And this is a new technology because it allows us to look at the heart in a very different way. Hospitals have tools like this. Of course, you can monitor your heart rate. The doctor has several different ways of just of, of doing that monitoring. But what's different about this technology is it's available to everyone. It costs $50. What we did was we got all the students together, all 50 of them, in a dark room, in a theater, and turned out the lights. And everybody's hearts were beating at different rates. And certain people had faster beats, and other people had slower beats. And what was amazing about that was that was the biggest instance of being able to see life and see humanity all at once. That's never happened at a doctor's office. That's never happened at home. That's never happened anywhere. All the relationships that have happened before are me looking at your heart rate, or a doctor looking at my heart rate, or it's all these one-on-one -on -one interactions. And with new technologies and new interfaces, we can start to appreciate the body as, as my body and all of your bodies. And if we all had our heart rate monitors on, we could see who the next speaker is because their heart rate would be flashing very quickly relative to everyone else. And so these interfaces can come from, from all sorts of places. This was a, a project making uh, electronic paint to try to bridge that gap between skin and silicon. But this is just an art project. And what we need to work on is actually creating these devices. So if you're, if you're an engineer or you're a scientist, this is the type of thing that I think is, is what, what drives us towards being able to understand ourselves and everyone else. So where health will come from is you, or maybe me, or maybe the person next to you. The, the doctors and the system and the medical system, it's pretty good. The biggest piece that's missing, the piece that's missing is you having those tools. And if you don't have those tools in your pocket, they're not in your garage, they're not in your kitchen, they're not on your bookshelf, if you don't have them, you should realize that and you should start creating them or asking for them or be open to the idea that your body is a beautiful thing. Thank you.